John, a 65-year-old male, has gone to the emergency room. He clutches his stomach in intense pain, suffering from a severe gastrointestinal illness. Ugh. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that about 48 million people get sick, 128,000 are hospitalized, and 3,000 die each year from foodborne pathogens in the United States. Some germs make you sick within a few hours after you eat the contaminated food. Others may take several days before symptoms appear. Food poisoning symptoms may range from mild to severe and differ depending on the particular germ you swallowed. Any diarrhea or vomiting? Ugh, I, I threw up this morning and I threw up last night and I've had, I've had diarrhea for two days. Okay, well we're gonna go ahead and get a stool sample and then run some blood work and I'll be back shortly. Okay, thanks. Mm. Oh. There are many different disease-causing bacteria, parasites, and viruses that can contaminate foods. Laboratory testing is required to pinpoint exactly what is causing John's illness. Some of the more well-known causes of recent outbreaks include salmonella, listeria, E. coli, and cyclospora. In John's case, lab tests have detected shiga toxin producing E. coli bacteria as the culprit. The laboratory reports the E. coli infection to the doctor and the local public health department. The clinical lab may ship the E. coli isolates to the state public health laboratory for more testing and DNA fingerprinting. Public health laboratories from across the nation submit DNA fingerprints of bacteria from sick patients to CDC via a nationwide surveillance network called PulseNet that monitors foodborne illnesses caused by bacteria. Since it began in 1996, PulseNet has detected thousands of local and multi-state outbreaks. There is at least one PulseNet laboratory in every state. CDC manages and monitors the PulseNet database, which keeps track of each bacterial DNA fingerprint collected nationwide. The system currently has more than one million DNA fingerprints on file. CDC investigators use whole genome sequencing to compare genetic fingerprints of bacteria from sick people. When multiple people get sick around the same time from bacteria with the same DNA fingerprint, that indicates a possible outbreak and we launch an outbreak investigation. Keep in mind, there's always a background level of foodborne illnesses reported by doctors, and what we're searching for are spikes in illnesses above normal. Disease detectives must work with speed and accuracy to stop an outbreak in its tracks. Local and state health officials interview sick people about the foods they ate before getting sick and where they bought those foods. People are often interviewed weeks after they got sick because of the time it takes their sample to be tested and reported to health officials. So they may have trouble remembering everything they ate. Saving your store and restaurant receipts is helpful, but many people throw them out or can't find them. This is where store loyalty cards used at checkout by customers come in handy, since they keep record of purchases. People can give the store permission to release these data to investigators. Investigators are looking for something in common linking the illnesses to each other, such as eating the same food, eating at the same restaurant, shopping at the same grocery store, or attending the same event. The goal is to narrow down how and where people got sick. By analyzing the answers to these questions, we can often identify a common food. For the E. coli outbreak that affected John in Michigan, epidemiologic evidence indicates that leafy greens sold in a chain of grocery stores in the Midwest are the likely source of this outbreak. Over the years, a wide variety of food types have been linked to foodborne illness, including cucumbers, cantaloupes, eggs, flour, cereal, peanut butter, and chicken. While millions of servings of leafy greens are consumed safely every day, this commodity has been implicated in numerous outbreaks. 
including a multi-state outbreak of E. coli in 2018, in which 210 people got sick, of whom 96 were hospitalized, and five died. Another example is a salmonella outbreak in 2020, linked to contaminated onions that caused illnesses in 1,127 people. 167 were hospitalized. The Food and Drug Administration regulates most types of food in the country, including fruit, vegetables, dairy, and most packaged food. Because the suspected product is a vegetable, CDC contacts FDA to determine who produced the contaminated food so it can be removed from the market to prevent more people from getting sick. If the source of the outbreak had been beef, chicken, or another USDA-regulated product, CDC would contact the U.S. Department of Agriculture and work with them on the investigation. If CDC cannot pinpoint a specific food at this early stage, they notify both FDA and USDA to investigate further. At FDA, the Coordinated Outbreak Response and Evaluation Network, known as CORE, is responsible for managing the outbreak response. So how many cases are we looking at at this point? The core teams have one yeah, goal, to control and stop the outbreak as quickly and efficiently as possible. CORE works directly with state and local agencies and investigators at FDA field offices scattered around the country to track down leads, trace the distribution of the contaminated leafy greens, and perform inspections and lab tests. Trace back investigations are the backbone of the detective work FDA does to identify from where the food may have come and where it might have become contaminated. It's a race against time to solve the mystery before more people eat that food and become sick. Our response teams coordinate the investigation of locations where sick people report buying food. This may include contacting grocery stores, restaurants, and other food retailers, and looking at their menus, ingredients, and supply chain records, which even today are mostly paper-based. FDA then works backward through the distribution supply chain, focusing on where and how the food got to the point of exposure. We map this path through the supply chain from farm to fork. Food can change hands many times before it is purchased by consumers, and all these touch points are looked at to find out if they have anything in common that would explain illnesses occurring across different states. This includes looking at any opportunities for introducing and spreading E. coli contamination. Investigating the supply chain may involve inspections of the facilities that handle and process food. These facilities may also combine ingredients from multiple sources to make the suspect food product. Any ingredient or the processing itself could be the ultimate source or cause of the E. coli contamination. Depending on what the traceback information reveals, FDA may go back to the source of the ingredients to conduct an inspection, for example, of a farm where a raw ingredient was grown. If the sample tests positive for a pathogen, FDA will determine the relationship of these samples to the outbreak pathogen using a DNA technology called whole genome sequencing. The objective is to find the bacteria with the same DNA fingerprint as the germ found in sick people so that action can be taken to prevent future illnesses. When there's enough evidence from the investigation and the product may still be in the marketplace, FDA and CDC warn consumers about the potentially unsafe product and works with the affected food companies to do a recall and remove the product from store shelves and restaurants. Because companies have ready access to their records and can help identify the specific items that must be recalled, FDA gives them the first opportunity to issue a press release to notify consumers about the recall. Often, FDA reviews the announcement to ensure all vital information is included with no conflicting messages. If a company refuses to voluntarily recall their product, federal law gives FDA the authority to keep contaminated or potentially contaminated product off the market. However, we rarely have to take enforcement action because most companies cooperate. 
These actions include mandatory recall, seizure of the food product, and obtaining an injunction to prevent distribution of the food. FDA, in coordination with CDC and state health departments, posts an announcement about each outbreak on its website and communicates to consumers via email updates and social media such as Twitter. These announcements typically include product recalls, how many people are sick in each state, symptoms of the illness, and advice to consumers and retailers about foods to avoid eating or selling. A foodborne illness outbreak investigation can take many weeks to unfold and solve the mystery. Also, there will always be a delay between when a person gets infected and confirmation that he or she is part of an outbreak. That delay is typically about two to four weeks for E. coli. If the source and route of the food contamination are identified, the company will initiate corrective actions to help prevent future outbreaks. The sampling results are uploaded into a database that allows public health officials to see if problems persist in food facilities and take the appropriate action when they do. FDA core teams have identified and responded to more than 230 outbreaks since 2011. To reduce foodborne illness, we must remain focused on prevention. To speed up outbreak investigations, we must leverage new technologies such as PulseNet to create a more traceable digital food system. For more information about foodborne outbreaks, you can follow FDA on social media and sign up for food safety alerts at the FDA website.